What is up, bros and brorettes? I am Ink Slasher, and welcome to Weapons of World War II, the series where we go through and look at the upcoming weapons in Call of Duty World War II. We talk about the history behind them. We also talk about the history of the Call of Duty games that they have been in. And today, we are going to be looking at the PPSH. And if you played the beta for Call of Duty World War II, you know this gun was an absolute god gun during the beta. So guys, I have a question for you. When I do these videos talking about these weapons that'll be in World War II, do you guys like the history? part of the video do you like me talking about why the weapon originated who made it that kind of thing if you do all you got to do to show me is let me know down in the comments and hit that like button the more likes this video gets the more likely i am to keep making these videos now throughout the series so far we've looked at many different weapons that will be in world war ii including the stg 44 and the mp40 a lot of which were the nazis weapons aka the germans weapons and today we're looking at a one that's a little bit different this weapon is a soviet weapon aka a Russian weapon. Now the history behind this one isn't as dark and dingy as let's say the STG-44, but it definitely has an interesting past and an interesting reason why they actually made this weapon. So the PPSH-41, as it's known, was made in 1941, and it was made to replace a weapon called the PPD-40. Now why? In fact, these weapons are incredibly similar, both of which are really reliable. So why would they create a whole new weapon to replace the PPD-40? And the answer is simple. The PPD-40 was extremely, extremely expensive to make. So this guy named Gregory Spagen came out and released the PPSH-41. Now the reason why it was so much cheaper to create the PPSH-41 over the PPD-40 is it's a different type of steel. It's called stamp steel, which is a lot easier to make, a lot cheaper, but just as reliable. Now there's an actual reason why these type of weapons became so popular during World War II. In fact, during World War II, there was approximately 6 million of these weapons built for Russians alone, which is absolutely insane. So why were these weapons so popular? There was a specific reason why the Russian army was trying to distribute them to so many soldiers. They were for two specific types of battle, one of which was the close quarter combat of cities, and the second was something that they called the Winter War. And no, we're not talking about Game of Thrones or the Winter Soldier. We are talking about something called Winter War. And what these were, were the winter battles that often took place in forests during World War II. If you've ever seen Band of Brothers, the scene where they're sitting, freezing their ass off in the forest. These are the perfect opportunities for the Russian soldiers to use the PPSH-41. Reason being, most of the time in these forests, there weren't really long lines of sight because of the massive amount of trees that the soldiers would be surrounded by. Therefore, with a short line of sight, a weapon that had a really large magazine like the PPSH and fired incredibly fast would excel extremely well in these types of battles. Now, as far as weapon stats in real life, what does this weapon look like? Well, the type of ammo that this weapon uses is a 7.64 by 25 millimeter Tokarev round. Now a Tokarev round is basically a pistol round, so an incredibly, incredibly small round. And because of this, it could have really large magazines. So the regular box magazine, which is like your rectangular magazine, carried 35 rounds. Whereas the drum magazine, which is the rounded magazine that we've seen in many Call of Duty games before, carried 71 rounds, which is a huge amount of ammo for an SMG. And just like in present Call of Duty games, this weapon in real life has a really fast fire rate, ranging from 900 to over 1,000 RPM. Now, what happened to this weapon after World War II? Well, this weapon was used all the way up into the Korean War, but right after World War II, the Russians actually sold the design of the PPSH to the Chinese military. The Chinese military took this design and designed a weapon called the Type 50. Now, if you look at this weapon, it literally looks identical to the PPSH. And the Chinese military almost exclusively used this weapon during the Korean War. Almost all of their soldiers had a type of this weapon. 
So where does this weapon fall into Call of Duty? Basically, this weapon was in almost all of the World War II Call of Duty games. It was in Call of Duty 1 in single player and multiplayer, in Call of Duty 2 in single player and multiplayer, but oddly, not in Call of Duty 3. As I've mentioned before, Call of Duty 3 was the first made Treyarch game, and in this game, there was just no PPSH. Oddly though, the game that the PPSH came very popular to was Call of Duty World at War, the next Treyarch game. And in this game, it was one of those weapons that people just seemed to love in the multiplayer. Now the PPSH in World at War was actually pretty realistically designed as well. For example, if we look at the magazine size in the game, it was 35 rounds with the box magazine and 70 rounds with the round run magazine, just like we talked about in real life. On top of that, the rate of fire of this weapon was a little bit higher than real life life at 1,250, which is what separated this weapon from every other SMG in the game. It's incredibly, incredibly fast fire rate. However, this was evened out with the damage profile. The damage profile of the PPSH in this game would range from a 5 to a 6 bullet kill, whereas every other SMG in the game would be a 3 to a 4, sometimes a 5 bullet kill, but generally a 3 to a 4 bullet kill. So a very large difference between the PPSH and the rest of the SMGs in the game. And I think that's one of the reasons why this weapon became so popular in the game. It was simply different than the other weapons. Then after Call of Duty World at War, there was really no other Call of Duty games that had the PPSH as a weapon, except for one, Call of Duty Black Ops 3. And one of the more recent Call of Duty games, the PPSH came in as a DLC or supply drop weapon, whatever you want to call it. And once again, it had the iconic 35 round box magazine and 71 round round drum magazine. So it was interesting to see them add that into the game. However, the fire rate of this weapon in Black Ops 3 was 895 RPM. So a lot slower than Call of Duty World at War. On top of that, this weapon had a little bit better of a damage profile in this game at a 4 to a 6 bullet kill. So it kind of was a different weapon than World at War, but overall it had that really fast fire rate with kind of low damage profile with a very large magazine size for an SMG. And then there's Call of Duty World War II, and if you didn't play the beta, the thing you should know about this weapon in the beta is it was an absolute bullet hose. It absolutely destroyed people and by many was considered the best weapon in the beta. But what made this weapon so much better than the PPSH in Black Ops 3 and World at War? Well, I think there was a couple of things. First of all, this weapon had pretty low recoil, especially when you put grip on it. It once again had the very large magazine size that is iconic on the PPSH, and more specifically, this one actually had pretty good range. I found myself getting pretty easy kills up past 30 to 40 meters, which compared to Black Ops 3 and World at War, you'd kind of need to be within 20 meters to easily kill someone. And that's a combination of both having good range and low recoil that made that possible possible in Call of Duty World War 2. So what will be really interesting to see is whether they keep the stats the same going into the final build of the game or if they keep it the same as the beta. But let me know what you think down in the comment section below. If you know anything about the PPSH that I didn't mention in this video, feel free to leave a comment letting me know. And if you enjoyed the video, it would be very greatly appreciated if you could hit that like button. Also, if you're new to the channel and like what you see, you can always hit that subscribe button as we have new Call of Duty videos coming out every single day of the week. But guys, I hope you enjoyed the video. Thank you so much for watching, and until next time, peace out. Hold on, hold on.